Today, it's Taylor versus Taylor. We're looking at the 8022E and another brand new model, the GTE Mahogany Top. Just to confuse things more with the Taylor line, we're gonna put them to the test and see which one you should choose. Stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom designed t-shirts. So we are looking at two mahogany topped small body guitars from Taylor that have both come out either right now or in the last two months. Is yep. that about right? Yeah. All right. So this one is the one that we've already done videos on that has already launched. This is the Taylor AD22E, which we were excited about. This constituted, according to Taylor, the first grand concert body, not including the grand uh, the Guitar Center exclusive that they did, uh, to the American Dream line. We don't want to pay, pay attention <laughs> to that one, you know. <laughs> So uh, the Grand Concert 8022E, it features uh, mahogany top, sapele back and sides. And if you haven't seen it, we did a video comparing this to kind of the, the king in this segment, which has been the Martin Triple O 15M. And it was a very good comparison. Yeah. They both really shined. They both definitely had their benefits to it. And I was surprised at how much warmth the Taylor had compared to the Martin, which was a bit shocking. But uh, not to leave mahogany top loving small body uh, guitar fans in the dark, uh, Taylor has given us more. And that is what you have. You have the GTE yeah, Mahogany. Yeah, Mahogany, the Grand Theater, which you know we saw the Urban Ash version last year, the GTK21, GT811, um, and now, now we get a, a whole bunch more bunch GTs. Of whole fun ones, which all of them are kind of cool and special in their own way. This is the one that I predict will probably be the most popular, um, just because everybody loves an all mahogany, and this is all mahogany. That one this is actually all mahogany. Yeah, so beautiful, solid wood, um, small body guitar, like we've talked about before, between the size of like a GS Mini and mm -hmm. a Grand Concert. Yeah, check them out. Um, Very similar in size. But, Very similar in size. Yeah, so, and you've talked about before, so the Grand Theater, is it a scaled down version of a grand orchestra? Yes. Which, you know, the GS Mini. Is a scaled down, down version, version of the Grand, grand Symphony. Symphony. Yeah. So we don't have a Geo Mini over here. It's a Geo Mini, basically. But it's yeah. not, not by name. <laughs> um, but yeah, all hog on the Geo Mini that I got right here. And Something tells me if we were flying the marketing uh, you know, meeting, they called it the GT because if they called it a Geo Mini, people would probably think it was a lesser expensive guitar. Yeah. And not all solid wood, so it had to have a new name. Yeah, which I don't I'm, know that. I'm, I'm just speculating. Yeah, so. I'm totally fine with that. Um, you know what the original name for the American Dreamline was? <laughs> what? They actually we're going to call it the American Streamline because they've totally streamlined the guitars over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought of that one a few minutes. That's ago. That's a I great dad to, joke. That's not true. Uh, American Dream is. It was the know, shop where Taylor got eventually became Taylor. It. Uh, but this is not an American dream. You so got the American dream. it's a shrunken down geo. Yeah. And it's basically a Goldilocks guitar. Um, so it's it's smaller technically than the Grand Concert. Mm -hmm. It's got a shorter scale length. The Grand Concerts already feature a shorter scale length than most everything else in the lineup, like 24, 7 eighths, uh, or 3 quarters, something like that. And uh, this is 23 fractions. Something it's like between a GS Mini and a Grand Concert. The nut width is between one and three quarters, which is what this has, and a GS Mini, which is one eleven sixteenths. Everything's kind of like massaging to find that sweet spot. And it has different bracing. C-class. Yeah, so this is V-class bracing, and they call it that because it's shaped like a V. And that's C-class bracing, and they call it that because it's not shaped like a C. It's cantilever. Cantilever bracing. Uh, which is asymmetrical. It's basically like half of the V-class bracing, allowing the top to move more, accentuate certain frequencies. And the whole idea behind the GT, which we've covered before, is for years people asked for a solid wood GS Mini. Andy Powers determined he made some. It really didn't change the guitar enough because you had to grow the guitar a bit to really take advantage of all solid wood construction. And so that's what he did. And we have the GT, which is just a fun size. It's kind of like 
Snickers bars come in fun size. <laughs> so the GT is like Taylor guitar fun size. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the new one brings what a lot of people yeah. like in both the GS Mini and many other guitars, which is all mahogany construction. So what's typical of all mahogany guitars? I mean, it's like being by the fireside. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's so warm. I can smell the campfire on my hoodie right now. I, I love that. You know, you go camping, you're, you're out, and then you get back and you're like, smell like ash. No, you know what I love <laughs> is go camping, come back, take four showers, and my mustache still smells like campfire. Like fire. cigarettes, It's, it's right, just Chris? been smoked. <laughs> yeah, you got to uh, smoke it. That's the worst. <laughs> uh, but this is not the worst. Everybody likes it all mahogany because it's very warm sounding. Mm -hmm. uh, Mid-range monster, DeMar DeRozan, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge style, you know, back in the good old days when the Spurs almost had a winning record. Almost. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like we talked about, we had the Triple O 15M as compared to the 22E. A lot of people love that Martin because... You know, it's standard series Martin, but you got all mahogany. It's warm. It's well, it's warm. And pretty. It's affordable. There's a huge value proposition. It's got a great tone. Like, yeah. there's a reason they're so sought after. And I think a lot of people go for Taylor not just because of the sound, because of the comfort. Mm. And the GT is like one of the most comfortable guitars. If you've already loved your GS Mini, but need to kick things up a notch with all solid wood and just a little bit bigger sound, um, it's just a perfect little guitar. You know. So with this coming out, um, and this coming out, they're very close price point. Mm -hmm. It might even be the same, or just slightly off. Um, and they're very similar in construction. This has Sapele back inside its mahogany. That's all mahogany. By the way, do you notice the, the tear sheet for this said it was neotropical mahogany, which if you've watched any of Taylor's very cool kind of travel the world Tonewood videos on their YouTube channel, you'll know that there's mahogany being grown in Fiji since I think like World War II. It's a really cool story. So it's actual Honduran mahogany, That's pretty but cool. there's groves of it in Fiji, which is my understanding what the neotropical mahogany is. So pretty cool stuff. Um, a compelling little guitar, and they're very, very similar. So th because they're so similar in price point, because their new models that just came out, the question really becomes for someone who's a Taylor fan who really loves mahogany and wants a good value, which one of these should you go with? Because they're both small body, short scale guitars. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the demo we did today will help to answer some of those questions. So we'll put them through their paces, play the exact same things on both guitars so you can listen for yourself and uh, then we'll meet you on the other side and talk about the tonality because they're very different. So check it out.
And so there you have it. The demo between the 8022E, which was it last November these I were think introduced? So, yeah. And the new, just released 2022 GTE Mahogany, which joins a whole stablemate of new GT body shaped guitars. And since these are both small body, short scale mahogany topped guitars, there's a lot of similarities here. This is an American Dream, it's a GT, the price is very similar. They're both eucalyptus fingerboard and bridge. They both come with soft cases. There's a lot the same, but the tonality is pretty different. Did you notice? Yeah, I want you know I want you to talk about the feel and what you heard yourself in the demos. Obviously, I want to hear which one you liked more, but tell me what the sound difference is to you. So surprisingly to me, I found the GT was a little bit brighter than the 8022E. And that was, that was kind of surprising, given that that's all mahogany and this has Sapele back in sides. I typically expect Sapele to brighten it up a little bit because it's a little denser than mahogany actually is. And that's not what happened in this particular case. And my thoughts are that it has in part to do with the bracing and in part to do with, with the scale length. Now, I actually would have thought that a shorter scale guitar is also warmer yeah, uh, because the harmo harmo harmonics are a little bit closer together um, and the top's not as driven as much, but I think that was actually part of what I was experiencing. Yeah. And something you didn't see in the demo was the first run I had at a, at a, at a song and I stopped and, and we started it over again. And when I did, I kind of backed off on the GT a little bit. And so what I, th what I think is happening, this is my opinion on it, is that the shorter scale length with light gauge strings makes these strings a lot slinkier mm -hmm. than the same strings on this, which are slinkier than the same strings on a 25 inch scale guitar. Um, and so that's, that's changing how the top's responding, but it's also changing just how the strings are. And with a, I use a, like a one and a half gauge pick, um, it was easy to kind of make those strings just kind of flop. Yeah. You know, and so I backed off a bit. Finger picking, they were both pretty much on par, but I can feel in my fingers kind of the slightly higher yeah. tension of these. Um, and so that, that, was, that was the most immediate, most immediate noticeable thing that I encountered. How about you? I mean, I don't know. I feel like for me, and I, I'm sure a lot of people are the same, if I'm playing for a long time on pretty high tension strings and then I go to something that's a little slinkier, I'm like, man, I love this. And then vice versa. After I play something slinkier, I kind of long for a little more tension. Mm -hmm. So I think that my what I like about these would probably go back and forth. I think they're both great. Um, I will say that when we were messing around with the 22 versus the Martin, um, you know, we were both surprised to find that we really loved the 8022. And in the weeks since it's come out, I've gotten to, they were super hard to get a hold of. Yeah, they weren't. Sorry about that. It's not really our fault, but yeah, sorry. Yeah. Anyway. So, good thing is, as of filming this video, we have a good amount of both of these that I think is going to make a lot of people happy because we've gotten calls for this guitar mm -hmm. for weeks. So, we finally have them. Um, I've come to love this guitar more and more um, just because I think it's so warm and nice and comfortable. Um, and I like the GT as well. I would probably go for the 8022, maybe get a GT in one of the other wood combos. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's tough and I think I'd probably go back and forth on them. I am liking all the new GTs quite a bit, but the real question is 8027E against these two, what you going for? Yeah, we'd have to try that out because I, do it. I really, yeah. I like the 8027E a lot. I'll tell you between these two, this might be surprising given what I said, but I would choose the GT. I really liked the feel of the GTE. I just had to ch kind of change how I approached it. Yeah. I have, I did think to myself that I might experience, uh, exper by the way, this doesn't have a truss rod cover on it because this was an early sample for us to shoot videos with in case you're wondering like do they no longer come with truss rod covers they do they do um, we'll, we'll put one on here. they have to rush them out to us before you guys get to see them but um so i would probably experiment with different strings because i like the shorter scale length but it's kind of like a gs mini a gs mini comes with medium gauge strings because the scale is so sh so short and this is kind of not quite there but not quite here and i might try changing out like a heavier bass 
you know, like a, a light medium yeah, like set. A, yeah. Yeah. Because I like the, the, the tonal response of the olive mahogany body, and I really like there's a bit of a girthiness that the C-Class bracing gives the GTs. And I've said before, when they first launched the GT, I had an Urban Ash model that I wish that Taylor had forgotten that I had in my possession during the pandemic because I just loved that guitar. Yeah. Um, and I, I played it a lot. And so I miss having that. Um, and so I, I between these two, I would probably go there and mess around a little bit, but I once I adapted to it, I was just like, okay, I really it like, great. like yeah. where this is. So, I think it's just a cool option from this blacktop. All the other new GTs, yeah. I mean, they're giving people a lot of options and for this nice Goldilocks size, um, which, like a GS Mini, like a Grand Concert, but they're great for playing at home, great for performing. Looking forward to seeing more people play with and these. And versatile you know? at what you can throw at it. We, yeah. I mean, we just did a video with some other small body guitars, and I've said, like, if you strum those guitars, they just give up the ghost. There's just, they, they don't have the capacity to hang. There's no backbone. There's, just because of the size of them. And that's typical of most small body guitars. And one of the things that surprised me with the GTs is that uh, you can strum them, and they, they'll yeah. hang with you on it, uh, particularly depending upon which one you get. But they're fine with being strummed for a small body guitar. And so I think what Taylor's done is they've taken the idea of having this fun, small, parlor-sized guitar and changed it enough to be really more versatile for the modern player. I feel like that's Taylor's MO for the past couple of years. It's like, what's something that's never worked and how can we make it work? <laughs> or or let's, uh, let's journey back into the past and grab these designs and then fix them. It's just crazy. I, do you think Andy Powers has all of the failed prototypes? Uh, yeah, so I, here's what I know from spending time with Andy. Uh, if he ever sees this, I don't know how much YouTube Andy watches. I'm pretty sure most of his Instagram stuff, there's someone from marketing standing there saying, like, please do something. Uh, <laughs> he's too busy making, like, a baritone, eight-string arch top. He, he's yeah. an interesting guy, and I really like Andy. I've really enjoyed all of the time I've, I've gotten to spend with him at times. Um, and every interview I've heard from him, and here's, here's my take. Uh, I think he mostly keeps every single prototype. I know we accidentally got shipped prototype classicals once. And uh, those were not supposed to ship to us because they were Andy's. Um, and so we, I, I, I was, right I was, I was to tempted Andy to and lose one, yeah. but we shipped them back. Um, I've heard him in interviews talk about uh, keeping around an early V-class guitar and going in and like continually carving on the bracing just to see at what point the guitar would fail. Um, and I, I, just listening to him, I've gotten the distinct impression that he returns to these various, various experiments over time. Um, and I've seen cool. a lot of his old instruments that he made for himself, like an arch top, and probably one of the best mandolins I've ever played was an A Powers mandolin that he made. Um, so, cool. so fantastic builder, uh, but definitely I think he continues to revisit ideas and tinker. Uh, he's a tinkerer, so, and we benefit from it. So thanks, yeah, Andy, keep tinkering. Everything that we've gotten since, you know, since pandemic, I think it's been almost two years now that we did a little video with Chris called... Why is, why is it so hard to find a guitar, supply mm. constraints, and everybody said that we're losers? Yeah, people are like, well, oh, you're just trying to sell more guitars. It's and... been two years, and when's the last time you saw an HD28? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 2022, by the way. There will be more supply constraints. So, yeah. uh, But thankfully, we have these. Um, I think Taylor's done a good job of, of being responsible in sourcing wood and getting these to yeah. us. So if you're watching this, these have launched. We now have these in stock, and if you want either of these, uh, we have them, hopefully, when you're watching this video to suit your needs. So uh, let us know in the comments which one you think is the better guitar, which one you would pick between these two. Um, would it be the GT? Is that Goldilocks compelling to you? Uh, or do you prefer the sound of the AD22 with the slightly tauter strings? So let us know. And if you're new to the, to the channel, make sure you subscribe like the 100,000 people before you that helped us get that plaque. Um, turn on notifications, like your videos, and keep coming back. At the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing. So keep playing, and we'll see you next time.